But when I was a kid, I always looked at the magazines, the motorcycle magazines and stuff, and they always had a camel man in there that was floating a Land Rover across this river in somewhere in the jungle in the world. And so I, I always thought that was really cool. And they said, and in this, in this pamphlet, it said, the greatest adventure in the world. And I thought, that's for me. I did the Camel Trophy in 1996, and we crossed the island of Borneo. It was the first ever east-west crossing by four-wheel drive. I competed with Fred Hose, and uh, it was a life-changing experience. I mean, it really set me on my path. It was, I had been out of the military for three years before, but was still looking for something, something I needed to test myself in. And with my history of four-wheel drives as a kid growing up and what I did in the military, which was, I was an infantry soldier, so we did a lot of navigation and a lot of time in the bush, a lot of time just being dirty for extended periods of time. It was a perfect fit. Yeah, like I said, life-changing. It made me who I am today. I saw an ad for Camel Trophy in an off-road magazine. And it showed a fellow obviously in the jungle, vehicle was covered in mud and, and vegetation. And, uh, and I thought, wow, that's, yeah, that's for me. That, they're out there doing something pretty spectacular. I, I want to try and go and do that. When I first got that article, in, in like in 85 or 86 about Camel Trophy, that was what I decided I wanted to do. Page after page after page of the coolest photos Guys waist deep in mud, digging out their winches, you know, vehicles on barges going across rivers, uh, sunsets, just going through the jungle. And I read the book from cover to cover. I read the book from cover to cover again. And in the very back of the book, there was a little phone number. Well, I, I filled out an application and I figured uh, that's the last time I'm going to see or hear anything about that. And I'll be darned if I didn't get a telephone call from Tom Collins and we did a phone interview and then he invited me to the national trials in Grand Junction, Colorado. Um, made it through that, went to international selection trials in uh, Jeanville, France and uh, Fred Monsies and I were selected as the primary drivers for the Siberian Camel Trophy in 1990. In 1990 I was fortunate enough to achieve what I had determined as my goal at that point in my life. I was fortunate enough to go back again and do two more Camel Trophies, as a support driver in Tanzania and then as a convoy mechanic. In 1995, I applied. A friend of mine had told me about it. Um, at that point in time, I was on my way to Africa to go climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Once I was accepted for the U.S. trials, then the training really began. I remember the, the uh, coach, Tom Collins, always saying, you know, you, you need to be able to change that tire quickly. And I was always so proud when I called him and said, you know, I, I got it done in seven minutes. And he said, well, that's good, but really we'd like it in five. I first saw about Camel Trophy in the magazines, four-wheeler magazines specifically. I finally made the team for the Sabah Malaysia event in 1993. Ended up with a great partner, Michael Hesse, and Michael and I and our two journalists ended up doing well in the event, actually winning it. And that, that piece of it, it was, it was really a dream come true, the whole adventure, ultimate adventure. The event was, was everything that they claimed it was going to be. Of course, TC had told us an awful lot about what was going to be happening. But you go down there, you get about a day to acclimate to the, to the climate, and then it's two days, throw you right under the bus, and two days worth of special tasks, 48 hours straight, minimal or no sleep to see how you're gonna deal with that sleep deprivation thing. Right before, uh, close to three week, 1,200 mile journey we did through Central America. But if you take a triathlon and then just multiply it, uh, because there are all these areas that you have to be really good, everything from driving to knowing the vehicle, the mechanical part of it, to the running and the swimming. I remember them telling me that, you know, get put a pack on your back and be fully dressed and be ready to cross a river. I had an opportunity to go places that people in America have never gone. Um, it's, that, it's that sense of adventure, that, that unknowing. Um, it's the the desire to do something and keep on going when the environment you're in is pretty freaking undesirable. My year there was 15 different countries, so 15 different cars, 
and plus about 15 support cars. So a 30 car convoy going through, you know, the, the traditionally the, the hardest roads in the, in the world. Um, so everybody had to work together to get all the cars through. And we had a deadline. I mean, you know, we were going to be in Georgetown on this day, regardless of what happened. And sometimes that meant, you know, winching through mud bogs around the clock. So we had to stay on, on uh, schedule. The Camel Trophy competitors driving 48 hours nonstop, winching, digging, shoveling in the deep mud, and, you know, being covered up to your waist in mud. That's not an issue with those people. Totally taking care of themselves out in the field, cooking their own meals, arranging their own camps, not a problem. They just go for days and days. Lots of endurance. Mud? Oh, gosh. Yeah, there was crazy mud. What was, what was probably the most, one of the most interesting things is you push yourself. You're, you're, you're not taking a bath, and when you do take a bath, it's in a, it's in a river with leeches or it's, or it's just rainwater because you're just drenched in mud for three weeks. It was pretty interesting how different that land is compared to the land that maybe I was used to. I think I learned how far you can push yourself, what you can do under great um, tension. Camel is about maintaining a positive, upbeat attitude. If you could be the nicest person in the world at 8 o'clock in the morning, at noon, at 2 o'clock, but what do you like after 36 hours of being hungry, being wet, being cold, and being tired? If you turn into a then you're pretty much useless. But if you can still maintain a positive attitude and motivate the people around you, you're still going to be moving forward productively. And that's the way most people should be in their business and work relationships. That meant positive attitude and meant mentality. Not that, ah, I don't give a crap anymore. Ah, my truck's broken. You know, that's not what gets you ahead. So that's what I think that the true meaning of Camel is. Look at one of the most important awards for many of us was. It's team spirit. It's not how well I do that special event. It's how much I help the group to get from point A to point B, to achieve a goal that the entire convoy is working for. It's not an individual sport, it's a team sport. Yeah, there's 16 or 17 or 20 different countries competing, but what are they competing at? They're competing really to have a good time and to achieve their goal of getting from point A to point B is really what I see as the main goal of